In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to create this mixed media artwork based on the storybook of Elmer the Patchwork Elephant. I'm going to create two versions. This is the first using oil pastel resist. The second version is a little more complex using coloured pencils. You can skip ahead to that one at this timestamp. For both projects you'll need Edicol or powdered food and finger dye. Here in Australia this is purchased from arts and crafts suppliers and is a very common brightly coloured painting medium used in schools. The reason I'm using this kind of colour is because it isn't permanent when dry, which means it will bleed and start to run when it gets wet, which will be important for the printing process to follow. To start I'm going to coat sheets of A3 cartridge paper in different colours. If you're in a class you could work all together to make a class set of colours. Or to make a smaller set you could paint strips of different colours on the one sheet. Once the coloured sheets are dry, you need to cut them into different size strips. I'm cutting the whole stack at once to save time. Then cut the strips along the opposite direction to create the squares and rectangles. The next step is to arrange the coloured shapes in a patchwork design on a sheet of paper. To do this I'm rubbing a glue stick all over the page, then attaching the coloured squares. You don't need to be too particular and make sure all the squares stick down perfectly because this is going to be the plate from which I'm going to take the print from. So the squares just need to stay in place really. Add some smaller shapes to finish. Now we need to draw an elephant. I'm going to speed up the video but please pause each step if you need to. To draw an elephant, you first need a large fat oval for the body. Add a smaller circle on the top left of the oval for the head. Then a triangle for the ear. And then a trunk and some squares for the legs. Now you have the basic structure to sketch the elephant. Join up all the shapes by drawing an outline around the edge. Next I'm going to erase these sketchy construction lines because you don't want them showing in the final print. You can also use the eraser to lighten the outline. So I'm just gently rubbing over that outline to make it a bit lighter and not so dark. But I'm not rubbing it out completely. I can still see it. Next you need an oil pastel. I'm going to use a dark blue. First I'll go around the edge to give it a border. I'm drawing the border a little smaller than the A4 size of the coloured plate so that some of the print will show around the edge. Then trace the outline of the elephant. Now you need to colour in all the negative space around the elephant. The negative space is basically everything that is not the elephant. So imagine you're colouring the air around the elephant. Try to be neat with your colouring and make that outline of the elephant crisp and clear. I'm using a dark blue oil pastel, but you could choose a different colour. I think it's better to choose a darker colour as it will stand out better in the next step. Or you could even try a white oil pastel. But white on white paper is a little trickier as it's hard to see where you've coloured and where you haven't. But it does create a nice contrast. Now back to the printing plate. Use a spray bottle to wet the whole sheet. You can see that some of that dye is starting to run and blend already. Make sure the whole plate is covered with water. Then take your oil pastel drawing and place it face down onto the plate. You can rub it down with your hands to transfer the dye to the drawing. And you can see that some of that dye has transferred already, so you could stop there and leave it to dry. Or to make the colours stronger and the edges of the shapes more defined, you can rub the page down with the back of a spoon. Rub around and around in small circles all over. And you can see how this technique is picking up more colour and definition by how the colour is coming through the back of the page. You can lift up the corners to check your progress and see if there's any areas you've missed. Then lift the print and leave it to dry completely.
The print is completely dry now. The next step is optional and not really essential. But if you want to remove some of that chunky, sticky oil pastel, you can use a scraper tool to scratch it back. Here I'm using a clay scraffito tool to scratch back the blue oil pastel. Or you could use a coloured pencil to scratch the pastel back. You can see how that pencil is removing the top sticky layer of oil pastel but leaving the colour behind. This just gives it a smoother, more blended finish. But as I say, it isn't essential. If you're happy with the print the way it is, I think it's fine to skip this step. Once you've scraped off all the oil pastel, give it a firm tap on the back to loosen any bits of pastel and use a stiff brush to clean it off. Now you can add some details to the elephant. Here I'm using a black fine liner to draw the ear, the eyes and the toes. And because this is supposed to be Elmer the patchwork elephant, I'm adding some little patches to the body. And finally I'm going to add some pops of deep colour with coloured pencils. Using the coloured shapes as a guide, I'm going to make a feature of the ears and the patches. The trick is to only colour within the outline of the ear and patches, and use the same colour pencil as the coloured shape underneath. So here I'm using a yellow coloured pencil to colour within the ears, and only on this yellow section. And I'll follow this process all over the ear, always staying within the ear shape and not crossing over the black line. And then the same again for the patches. And that's Elmer version one finished. This is my second version of this project. It uses the same printing technique as the first. These are squares of cartridge paper coated in Eddicol dye. I'm just using a glue stick to roughly attach the squares. They don't need to be very well stuck, as this sheet will simply be the plate from which I'm going to take a print from. The squares just need to stay in place. For this version, I'm going to spray the squares with white ink mixed with water. This will give the colours a little bit of a pastel look. Make sure the whole plate is covered with the white spray. This will react with the Eddicol dye and make it flow again. Then lay a sheet of heavyweight cartridge paper over the wet plate and press it into the surface with the back of a spoon. Rub all over in small circles. You might be able to see the colour coming through the page. You can lift up the corners to check your progress and see if you've missed any areas. Then lift up the top sheet to reveal the print. Now you'll need to leave it to dry completely. Now it's time to draw the elephant. Cut the drawing paper so it fits within the printed section. This is so that you can be sure that your elephant design will fit into the space. You can research your own elephant images to work from, or you can rewind back to this timestamp to follow my guided drawing of an elephant. Once you have your design, you need to carefully cut around the edge. Then place your elephant within the printed area and trace around the edge.
Now you need coloured pencils in darker shades of the colours that are printed. So here I have dark red, dark purple, a yellowy brown and so on. To make the elephant stand out I'm going to shade around the edge and fill in the negative space. The negative space is all the space around the elephant. So everything that is not the elephant. Think of it as colouring the air around the elephant. If it helps, you can use some wall tack to attach the elephant picture back in place. This will stop you from colouring inside the elephant, which is where we don't want to go. As well as only colouring the negative space area, I'm going to shade each square with its matching darker pencil shade. So here I'm starting with the yellow space and shading it in with the yellow brown pencil. And now that I've removed the paper, you can see how that shading has helped to define the edge and make the tail pop out. So I'll continue that technique all the way around. Matching the darker pencil colours to the coloured squares and filling in only the negative space. The space that's outside the elephant. This step might take you some time to do. It's important that you shade carefully and concentrate on keeping the outline of the elephant neat. Press hard with the pencil next to the outline edge so it is very clear and defined. If the edge isn't crisp and clear, it will be difficult to make out the shape of the elephant. So it's worth taking your time and not rushing. Once you make your way around the edge with all the colours, the elephant shape should be quite obvious. Now it's time to add the details to the body. I'm using a pencil to lightly sketch in the ear and extend the legs, and then using the same shading technique of matching the colours to bring out the ear shape. As this picture is inspired by Elmer the Patchwork Elephant, I'm adding some patches with a fine liner pen. And I'll repeat the same shading technique in those patches to make them stand out too. I chose an elephant for this project because it has a very obvious and identifiable outline. But of course you could experiment with different types of animals or designs. Just look for something that is quite simple and stands out. And there we go. Elmer the Patchwork Elephant version 2. Thanks for watching.